Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. Today we have a new ASCII in Obstetrics. Please try to answer before me. Please log to this picture and identify this maneuver and its indication in Obstetrics. Take your time. Log to this picture. Identify this maneuver and its indication of obstetrics. This maneuver is pudendal nerve block using local infiltration anesthesia, as you see in the syringe. And this side of the ischial spine is the side of pudendal nerve. Okay, and this is the sacrospinous ligament. The pudendal nerve run behind the ischial spine here. So when we inject, we palpate the ischial spine and inject at this side for pudendal block. What is the indication of pudendal block? It is used to induce perineal anesthesia in obstetrics. Especially when you are going to do an experimental delivery, like vacuum delivery, like forceps delivery, and you, you need perineal anesthesia, you can do within the nerve block, will cause perineal anesthesia. Also, you can add for within the block local infiltration anesthesia in the perineum as in the geometry and so on. So, the answer is you get the block used to reduce perineal anesthesia in obstetrics, especially if you are planning for an experimental delivery like forceps or vacuum delivery. Let us go to the next. This picture shows different sides of ectopic pregnancy. What is the commonest side and its lines of treatment? As you see in this picture, there are different sides of ectopic like ambulatory, isthmus, interstitial, fimbrial, ovarian, cervical, and so on. What is the commonest side? The commonest side is the ambulatory portion of the tube, the fallopian tube. More than 70% of this. Okay, so ampullary part of the fallopian tube is the commonest. So this is the answer. What are different lines of treatment? It depends. If it is disturbed ectopic, chronic disturbed ectopic, laparoscopic self injecting of the affected tube is the best line of treatment. If the vital are stable, you can do laparoscopic cerebral injection. If acute disturbed and the vital unstable and the patient is shot or hemodynamically unstable, laparotomy and the cell injectomy. Okay, so laparoscopic cerebral injectomy if the patient is stable or, or if not stable, you can do laparotomy and the cerebral injectomy. If the patient not disturbed and the mass is more, smaller than 3 cm and no fetal pool and no fetal pulsation and, and the tetra is very low, less than 1000, you can do chemotherapy with mesotrexate, for example. Okay, so this is different lines of treatment. Also, if the tube looks healthy, you can do salbingostomy or salbingotomy by laparoscopy. Another line of treatment. Okay, so this is different lines of treatment of tubal ectopic pregnancy, and the commonest side is the ampullary portion of the fallopian tube. 
Go to the next, please. Please look to this picture and identify A and B. Look to picture A. As you see, this is the delivery of anterior shoulder, the vaginal delivery. This is the delivery of anterior shoulder of the baby. While in picture B, delivery of the posterior shoulder. As you see here, with gentle downward traction of the head, picture A. The anterior shoulder hangs behind the symphys pubis and is the first to be delivered. Then, tilting up as in picture B, tilting the head up to deliver the posterior shoulder. So, A for delivery of anterior shoulder, B for delivery of posterior shoulder. Another part of this question mentioned two possible complications if baby has a macrosomia. Suppose the baby has a macrosomia with broad shoulder, complication may happen like shoulder dystocia, for example, brachial plexus injury, and so on. So, shoulder dystocia in a macrosomic baby may happen. I can't, I deliver the head, I cannot deliver the shoulder, this is called shoulder dystocia. Also, brachial plexus injury may happen. Go to the next, please. Identify the fetal presentation in this picture. What is the commonest complication in such a presentation? How to manage this presentation during the let us start with the first part of the question. Identify the fetal presentation in this picture. As you see, there is vertex plus hand and forearm. So this is called compound presentation. Compound presentation. Vertex with hand and forearm is called compound presentation. So this is the answer of the first part of the question. What is the commonest complication in such a presentation? In, in compound presentation, the commonest complication is cooled prolapse. And you should take care about this point very well if you meet a case with compound presentation. Cooled prolapse. How to manage this presentation during lab? Suppose. There is compound presentation, vertex plus hand, for, for hand and for arm. What you are going to do? During labor, spontaneous retraction of the hand and the forearm up may happen first, spontaneously. With the descent of the head, the baby retracts the forearm and head. So it may happen spontaneously. Or you can do BV and try to reduce this hand and forearm up the presenting part. And the, the delivery is going vaginally as usual. If the hand and the, and the forearm causing obstruction and the, no head descent, no progressive labor or there is cord prolapse you can do cesarean section to save the baby okay please look to this picture and identify a B and the C. A is complete breach presentation. B is foot link breach presentation. As you see, the foot 
percent down. Food link presentation. B. What about C? Frank Breach presentation. This is the first part of the question. Next part of the question, what is the mode of delivery in picture B if cervix is 5 cm dilatation? Picture B, as we said, footling presentation, cervix 5 cm, you should do cesarean section. You should do cesarean section for such case. Go to the next, please. Back to this picture and identify this maneuver. As you see here, this is the uterus, this is the placenta, and this is the hand trying to remove the, the placenta by shearing movement, by abduction and abduction of the finger. This is called manual removal of the placenta. It should be done under NCC. Manual removal of placenta as in cases of retain the placenta. Mention two possible complication during this maneuver or because of this maneuver. Remnant retain the remnant of the placenta inside the uterus. No complete removal of the placenta a part inside of the placenta or membrane so retain the part of the placenta or membrane this is one of the complications postpartum hemorrhage injury to the uterus introduction of infection all these are possible complications Postpartum hemorrhage, retain the part of the placenta and membrane, and, uh, introduction of infection. All these are possible complications of manual removal of the placenta. This is the end of this OSTI. I hope it was helpful for you. This is my site on Amazon and my site on YouTube channel where you can find many ASCIs like this one and the many lectures and I'll be guide. Thank you everybody, wishing you all the best.